to Tushar Jog for this initiative on behalf of CRBS to get artists involved in this issue, which uh, we have been trying for a long time, but didn't do it. topic is right to sedition, but uh, I'd just like to expand it a bit. Uh, I mean, sorry, right to dissent. That actually gives me something. The right to dissent, I feel, already exists. Uh, what we have to find out is when does the right to dissent become a crime and an offense? When, the, when does a dissenter become seditious? Um, sedition is right now in the news because Vinayak Sen got convicted of it and was sentenced to life in December. And since then, I think all of us know the definition of sedition by heart, which is, uh, we must always keep it in mind. Sedition means excite, bringing the government into hatred or contempt or exciting disaffection against the government. I don't know in India whether anyone needs to do that. <laughs> so, a country where government can tell the Supreme Court that grains can rot, but we won't distribute them to starving people. And as a journalist, I, it's part of my profession to be seditious. And it's also uh, the duty of every human rights worker to be seditious, because the government is the greatest violator of human rights. And it's happening every day. I mean, journalists are being seditious day after day, and human rights workers are being seditious day after day. So when, is, when does this activity become a crime and an offense? It's not as though we are all the time being for, prosecuted for sedition. It's only sometimes that these things happen. There are almost like seasons of sedition in India, when certain states uh, prosecute a whole lot of people under sedition. Right now, the season seems to run across the whole country and all kinds of people, whether it's lawyers, journalists, filmmakers, even children in West Bengal, they've all been prosecuted for sedition. So I think we should really explore what makes a dissenter seditious. Why is it that someone like Krishna Raj, who used to edit EPW, which every page of EPW is seditious, but sometimes uh, in 84, 86, he was slapped with sedition because he published an article on army atrocities in Punjab after Blue Star. And someone like Brahma Chelani, who was a strategic affairs expert and was in the running for national security advisor, when he was a journalist, he was slapped with sedition too. And at the other, other, other extreme, you find someone like George Fernandez, who built his political career on sedition. And he threatens Sonia Gandhi with sedition when he becomes a minister. So what is it about sedition that the, that the government finds so handy to use? And when does dissent become sedition? And the other question we should explore is, uh, what is the impulse behind sedition? I mean, is it that we say that it's part of democracy and it's our right freedom of expression? But in a country like China, which is a one-party dictatorship and doesn't make any bones about it, their journalists risk imprisonment, but they still go ahead and expose all kinds of things. The latest expose in China is about children being sold for adoption, being almost kidnapped by government officials, and that has come in one of China's uh, very well-known newspapers. And the uh, journalist has written it with his byline and with the fear that he will be imprisoned. So it's not just that in a, in a democracy we have the right even people who are not in democracies commit sedition. In Bangladesh, there's a poet called Daoud Haider who was slapped with sedition because he crossed, crossed over to India and interviewed about 200 girls who had escaped after being raped there by Jamaat-e Islami people. This was after the 2001 election. He, he met them and he wrote about them in his poetry and he was charged with sedition. So what is the, what is the desire of what makes people commit sedition? What makes someone like Vinayak Sen, who's been a dissenter all his life, what makes him suddenly become seditious? I think the very distinguished panel will talk about these uh, issues far better than I can. Uh, I don't know who's the first speaker. Uh, Mihir uh, Desa is a well-known advocate in Bombay. There are just a few advocates one can go to when we are stuck for human rights issues or labor issues and you know that they won't charge the earth or they won't charge at all. 
So they introduce it by that's why 124A. That they miss. Uh, so they amend the law in uh, 1900 in, uh, in 1870 and bring in sedition, broadly meaning that causing disaffection towards lawfully established government. If you if you cause uh, disaffection or if your act has a tendency of causing disaffection, and that's what Gandhi said in 1922. That look, it's my duty. If if uh, If causing disaffection means not having affection for the British, I consider it my duty not to have affection towards the British. And therefore, he told the judge who was trying him that, please, I am guilty of this offence because I have no affection for this government, and therefore I am guilty. Similarly, before him, uh, Tilak was tried on three occasions. Or sedition, 1897, 1908, 1916. Okay. He was tried on three occasions. Again, for writing something in Kesari, Maratha, etc., etc. On two occasions, he was uh, found guilty. Third occasion, he was exonerated. Any peasant was charged with sedition. So, sedition was known as a law before independence. <coughs> Which was something which was used against political opponents by the British to crush political opposition, to to crush anybody speaking against the government, to uh, to, to to stop anybody from uh, you know uh, forget violence and all because that the 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 debate happened in in courts as to whether violence was a necessary part and the courts said nothing doing no violence no rebellion has to be proved in order to prove sedition. And what is interesting, mind you, as I told you, Tilak was convicted twice by the British government, and Gandhi was convicted once by the British government. Each, all of them were sentenced to imprisonment by six years. Tilak twice, six years each, released earlier because of various other things, and Gandhi of six years. Binay Sen in the independent India has been sentenced to life imprisonment. 
Okay? And we are going one better than the British. <laughs> one better, two better, four better, I don't know what, but much better than... Uh, yeah. He has been sentenced to life imprisonment under uh, the sedition. At the time when Constituent Assembly was debating freedom of speech and expression, because ultimately any law preventing sedation is an exception to freedom of speech and expression. It's a restriction on your, on your freedom of speech and expression. In the Constituent Assembly, there was strong opposition to including word sedition as an exception to freedom of speech and expression. K. M. Munshi led that opposition. There was one other person called Said Balab uh, uh, Das, who said that, look, my grandfather in 1857, for helping the British during the rebellion, mutiny, had been given a diamond, diamond studded necklace. And in 1930, during the independence struggle, I said that this was a sin committed by my grand grandfather for having accepted this, and I will not repeat this sin. And for that he was charged, he was punished for three years of uh, imprisonment for having said this. Okay. So this is how sedition law has been used. As I said, Constituent Assembly said very clearly that sedition will not be an exception. Jawaharlal Nehru very categorically said that even in, as late as in 1952, that sedition is, an, uh, is what they call a black law. It has to be out outdated, has to be removed. So in constitution it was not included as an exception, but they did not make the amendment to Indian Penal Code. Constituent Assembly is discussing the constitution. They are not discussing each legislation. What they ought to have done was to remove it from the Indian Penal Code, because that's where sedition is an offense. Okay. They did not do it. Okay. They did not do it. And so people over the years, over the last 40, 50 years, have been repeatedly charged, and increasingly so. Okay. Increasingly so, they have been repeatedly charged with offenses of uh, uh, under under this section of sedition. Remember one thing that I mean, this have, I mean, just 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 imagine one Surat journalist was charged with sedition because he wrote that the floods which came in Surat a couple of years back were because of failure of Mayor Modi government. So he was charged with sedition. Now this is the level at which yes. the point is not whether he'll ultimately be convicted or not. Binayak of course has been convicted. But sedition law is such a harsh law that it is being used okay, to keep people behind bars for years together. The purpose of all these laws, whether it's sedition law, unlawful activities act, whether it was Tada earlier, Kota earlier, nobody was really bothered about convictions. Conviction happens, happens good. But even if conviction doesn't happen, we have achieved our, uh, our, our objective of terrorizing the population, of keeping the activists behind bars for a number of years, of demoralizing people. That's the objective of these laws. The objective of these laws is not some, uh, uh, you know, uh, to actually go and find out the, so whether somebody is rebelling against the government. There are other sections of Indian Penal Code for that. You have a separate section on waging a war against the government. There are other sections. You don't need to curtail freedom of speech and expression for this purpose. And the problem with these kind of laws is they can always be misused. The potential for misuse of this law is so great. We have seen it in Binayak's case. We have seen it in a number of other cases. Where somebody had written an article in Orissa about Kandamal riots. And he was charged with sedition. So you talk against the mainstream ideology, especially if you are addressing uh, the masses, especially if you are addressing people who are directly affected, adversely affected by that, that mainstream ideology, you are likely to be held up for sedition. And by the time you prove, I am sure Vinayak will be able to prove that uh, uh, he is not guilty. But by, by the time you prove that, yeah. The amount of energy which gets set, <laughs> the amount, the, the kind of torture which you have to suffer, the mental, emotional torture, you, your family, the people with whom you are working, everybody, is tremendous. 
So there is no question. I mean, the Supreme Court tried to read down the law, saying that the, the, the law was challenged constitutionally in the Supreme Court. And Supreme Court tried to read down the law. But there is no question of reading down the law. A law like this cannot be read down. A law like this has to be struck down. That's the point. This kind of a law, okay, till such time it remains on Till such time as I, you can't rely on bona fides of the of the police, bona fides of the executive, bona fides of the legislatures, or bona fides of the judges. You can't do that. And we have seen the bona fides of the judges in the trial matter. So I need not say anything more about it. So we can't rely on that. You can't rely that it will be used properly in a given case. No. It is, uh, there are laws like this which are meant to be, I mean, their proper use is this. I mean, I, 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 one can look at it differently. Is there the, any other place to add because of that outside the hall? Okay, okay. Some people can come this side. Come this side. There is some space, uh, standing space, I guess, here. Yeah. See, a lot of people say that laws like SADA, POTA, unfair activity, unfair, uh, unlawful activities act, sedition, we should prevent the misuse of these laws and then it will be fine. A lot of people say that. But please, we must all understand that the misuse is the use for which they are brought into effect. That's, that's the thing. That the, the misuse is the, is the use for which they are brought into effect. These laws are not brought into effect for some democratic, liberal attitude. With some uh, democratic, liberal attitude, they are brought into effect in order to terrorize. And, and therefore, the misuse is the use. And therefore, there is no question. There is no question of trying to read down these laws, trying to truncate these laws, trying to, you know, find some kind of a liberal meaning within these laws. Nothing of that that will work. The only thing which will work is stop having these laws. You are worried about violence. There are enough provisions in the in, under the Indian Penal Code. To stop violence, and please, under, please also let us understand one thing: that in England, from which we borrow all our uh, draconian and non-draconian laws, okay, uh, has removed sedition as an offence in 2010. Okay. They have removed sedition as an offence. A number of countries, Canada has removed, New Zealand has uh, removed. Okay. Number of countries have removed, uh, and there are a number of countries. For instance, in uh, USA, no sedition is an offence. The last person who was tried was in 1972. After that, there has been no no, no charges of sedition. Of course, they will use the Patriot Act and all that for uh, for those purposes. But I just so if one wants to have this great uh, globalization of uh, uh, of laws and all that, then one must also learn that these very countries okay, from which we are trying to borrow have removed these laws. Okay? I am not there, but they are trying to give any certificate to any of those countries. They are, equally bad within themselves and outside, but that apart. The point is that uh, this is this has happened. And the last thing I just wanted to say, I hope this doesn't go out of this uh, room. There is, <laughs> Don't count on that. <laughs> That's a way of saying let it go. <laughs> there is another law which we have all not really looked at. There is a law called Seditious Meetings Act of 1911. Now, so this Seditious Meetings Act okay, still exists. It has not been repealed. Under the Seditious Meetings Act, if there is any meeting plan which a district by district feels is going to be seditious, you can ban it. Thought crime. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, fortunately, I think uh, because it's uh, some uh, 90, I mean, nobody has noticed this law and nobody is taking action under this law. But tomorrow, if somebody decides to take action, they can take action against this law. I may have uh, spoken too soon, I guess. <laughs> so that's all I think. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thanks a lot to everybody.
just me being like, yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know whether I need to introduce Clavia at all. I mean, she's been in the movement, women's movement in Bombay since 1980, since the founding of Forum Against Oppression. For what was it called? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's contributed to a uh, very imaginative and creative understanding of law, especially relating to women and minorities, and has molded some of the laws relating to women. And uh, her writings or her books on law are like uh, handbooks for many of us who deal with these issues. And they are readable as well as scholarly. I thank Kusha for having me here, though I was taken by surprise. Uh, I did not know I was going to be on the panel, so I don't have a lecture on sedition. Also, I think all of us have come here to hear 